Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Power Talk with Shane and Becky. Um, it's Tuesday, March 22nd of 2022. And um, we've got a, an exciting word for you tonight. We hope that um, you'll stick around just to to um, hear the word. I hope it's an encouragement for everyone that's listening. Um, again, I, I want to first um, start off by saying thank everyone so much for their yes, prayers, thank you. Um, for their covering, for their um, love and support. Um, for last week, the devil really did not <laughs> want us to go um, live. He did not want us to get the word out at all. Um, and last week was pretty much for me was a, a blur. Um, but thank God he kept me and he kept his hand on me. God's still moving even when we feel like we're sick or when mm -hmm. we feel like we're down. God's still yeah. moving. We've been in some powerful meetings. Um, we Last Thursday, I had a chance, an opportunity to preach across town and God was just moving in that meeting. And then we had some church here Sunday morning. Lord, have mercy. The Holy Spirit just, I mean, fell on this place. And we just had meeting. Yes. It's, um, when you say we had meeting, that that's, um, that's what you call it, is, is good old-fashioned Holy Ghost-filled Anointed. Meeting. <laughs> church meeting. Um, There's a difference in church and church meeting you know when i was growing up you know it's according on what's being preached on or what's going on and if you're going to have church or you're going to have church meeting and you know church meetings normally was on that sunday night because mm -hmm. people come in they let their head their hair down they moved in their gifts they yeah. let the holy spirit take over that service and it was just amazing how god just i mean was in those services that's the kind of services we've been having here on Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, everything um, comes full circle. Uh, history repeats itself. We know that. And, um, you know, there there's coming a great move. Um, well, I say it's coming. I believe it's already here. Yeah. A great move <clears throat> of God where we won't want to leave the house of God. Um, we won't want to leave his presence because where the spirit of the Lord is, the Bible says there is liberty. And I don't know about you, but I want that liberty in God. I want that um, presence, that sweet presence of God because it's in his presence. Um, it's that anointing that breaks every yoke. And I, I don't want to, you know, rush back to what Satan has bound me up with during the week. Um, I, I want to experience all that God has for me, and I believe that that's what that remnant of God is um, that, you know, is talked about in the Bible is those which remain, those that um, they will stop at nothing to enter into the presence of God. Becky, I have, uh, something's really hit me. You know, a lot of times in church, I would say, um, in prayer, Lord, we ask that this morning you show up and show out in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. You know, that was such a foolish prayer because something really just convicted me. You know, God is always here. He doesn't have to show up and show out. He's always here. Mm -hmm. He's never left us. He's never left this church. He's never not showed out. It's up to us to receive what's about to happen in these services. You know, it's up to us to Pray before we get into the church. Lord, I want everything that you would have for me today. Lord, I want you to open up my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit, everything. Mm -hmm. I want to turn off everything of the world when I walk through those doors because I know that we're about to have a church meeting. I know that the gifts are about to come forth. I know that there's people going to be healed. I know there's people going to be set free. I know there's people going to be delivered. That's what we have to start praying before we even start having mm -hmm. church because, see, God's always been here. Right. He's never left this church. Yeah. It's up to us to accept what's about to happen. Yeah. You know, when we when we come into church and when we preach, there's something about a move when somebody starts saying amen. Mm -hmm. And somebody starts saying, thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
And you know, when praise and worship is going on, there's something about that hand being held up. You know, there's, that's the move of God that we're accepting because God's always here, like I said. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to receive what he's got for us. You know, it's um, you mentioned something when you pray before the service and you say that, you know, God, we welcome you in and he's already here. Um, it's more of the fact of us yielding and surrendering to him because he's already got it. Mm -hmm. He's already got everything that we need right here in the palm of his hand. It's just a matter of, okay, God, I know that I need you in, in every area of my life. I know that I'm facing things that I can't face by myself. So, God, that means that I'm going to have to yield to you. I'm going to have to surrender to you my thoughts, my mind. Um, that's what worship is. Praise and worship is surrendering your mind and yielding not to the things of the world, not to the cares of the world, not even to um, the lies of the enemy or the voice of the enemy. It's yielding yourself to the Almighty and yeah. opening yourself up to say, God, however you see fit um, to move on me, I'm here. However, whatever it takes. Have you ever gotten to a place where you said, God, whatever it takes, do what you got to do. Be careful what you wish for because <laughs> you just might get it. But you know what? I think that's where we have to get in a lot of times because I was talking to somebody on the phone today. And as I was on the phone, this is what we were talking about. You know, we, we ask God for all these things, you know, even healings. Mm -hmm. and, and we ask him for all these things. But are we where we need to be? in him because see we ask god for all these things and we we keep asking him but is our heart a hundred percent for him because a lot of times we we think okay god I'm, I'm not feeling good where's my healing where's my healing where's my healing where's my healing well a lot of times god's waiting on us to get a hundred percent focused on him mm -hmm. you know a lot of times when we go to the doctor and the doctor keeps Treatment after treatment after treatment after treatment. And then finally, when they say there's nothing else that they can do, doctors can't do anything else. Well, then what do we, what do, we do then? Then that's when we turn to Jesus 100% mm -hmm. and we say, God, I give you this 100%. You know, the doctors can't do it. And now I know I can't do it. So I want to give you total control. Yeah. I want you to have total control of my life. Once you have control, total. Once I give you total control of my life, and I take Shane out of it, or whoever the who's praying this prayer. Once I take me all out of it, isn't it amazing how God takes over and takes takes this thing and flips it upside down? You know, we had a lady in the church who was um, had cancer in different parts of her body, and she had been going through chemo and all these treatments, and I mean, it was treatment here and treatment there and all this stuff, and then. Finally, the doctor said, you know what? There's nothing else I can do. There's no more treatments. There's, mm -hmm. I mean, this is it. This is the last straw. This is yeah. all we can do. At that very time, that's when God says, okay, now we put man aside. It's my turn mm -hmm. because I'm the ultimate physician, isn't he? Yeah. So he stepped in and he took charge. These tumors in one place, I couldn't even find them anymore. They said mm -hmm. they're gone. Other tumors that they said were huge, they're barely even noticeable on microscopes. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. It's time for us to say, okay, God, whatever it is in my life you would have me to do, I want you to take full control mm -hmm. of me. It's it. I'm a visual person, so it reminds me of, say you've got a destination in mind, and you put that address of that destination in your GPS, you get on the road, and you, and you travel, and then you see these caution lights, and you see these big orange signs that says detour. Well, I don't know about you, but anytime I see the, the sign detour, I get a little antsy because mm -hmm. that's taken me off course. It's taken me out of my comfort zone. I know I can see that I was supposed to go straight, but now you're telling me to go someplace into the unknown. And, you know, it's not that it's not going to take us to our desired destination. There's just a safer route to get there. Maybe it's a better route. Maybe um, it's a longer route, but it may be um, safer going that way. And you may say, well, how do I know to get from here to there? Follow the signs. It takes you off that busy highway. 
where mm -hmm. everybody's got your mind distracted and your heart distracted. Right. It takes you down a, a, a lonely path, if you will, of, you know, a detour. But that loneliness, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, that's a long time between you and God. You know, a lot of times we try to stay on the, the, the busy highway because that's where everybody else is at. Mm -hmm. That's where everything's going on. That's where everything's happening. But sometimes God's saying, take the detour. Get by yourself. Get with me. Give me 100%. Mm -hmm. Because I want to work miracles in your life. You just got to open up and accept what I'm about to do. And it's, it's like I said just a few minutes ago. We wonder how we can get from point A to point B. And sometimes your GPS will work. Sometimes if you're in a, an unknown area without cell service, then you lose your GPS. Well, then what happens? Um, you may get anxiety. You may, um, you know, get frustrated because now you know that time is going to be taken, the added time is going to be taken in your destination. But how do you get there from where you are to there? You follow the signs. How do you get from where you are in life right now to where God wants you to be? You follow the signs. You read. God's not going to leave you stranded. Mm -hmm. He's not going to leave you helpless. You can rest assured that if he's taken you off the beaten path, maybe he's detoured you, um, that he will lead you. He will guide you. All you got to do is follow the signs. You got to read the signs that he's placed out um, before you. And then ultimately, it's your choice if you follow him. How many times have, have you said, well, I see the, where this is going, or maybe I, I know where it's going. I'm going to try a quicker way. And you end up lost. You end up out in the middle of nowhere, and you try to figure out how do I get back on that detour? How do I get back on the right track? It's the same way with life. Um, you know, we don't understand the detours that God gives us, um, but we don't see what is the cause of the detour. We right. don't see that construction up ahead. We don't see the wreck that is up ahead. We don't see um, the the movement up ahead. Um, sometimes it's it's inconvenient for us, but it's necessary for us. Otherwise, we would have headed right into that wreck. We would have headed right, and I'm talking about life, not in, in the physical sense. I'm talking about in life. You know, sometimes... We our life detours and we question God and we say, God, where are you? What are you doing? Um, you know, I should be here and I'm over here in life. And God's saying, you didn't see what I, I prevented you from going through. You didn't see what I kept yeah. you from. You didn't see the roadblocks up ahead um, beyond the roadblocks. You could not have sustained that. You could not have um, endured that. See, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And when when we yield to God and say, okay, God, today I thought I was going to go straight, but you've, you've taken me off the beaten path. Find joy in your journey. Because as sure as God is there with you, there's going to be joy. Joy unspeakable. You may not understand it, but when you get right around to where, oh, now I see. Did, did, have you ever taken that detour and you you finally got back on the road that you were originally on? May have been further down the road. Maybe it was um, a couple of roads later, but now it's like, oh, okay, that's where that took me. That's the same way with God. I can remember... A few years ago, I was um, down in Macon, and I was working, and I was I was driving, and I knew I had all these appointments, and and I just got stressed, and the anxiety was so high, and I was kind of getting frustrated because I had deadlines I had to meet, and I'd made no time for God, and I, I just knew that I had to do all these things, and blah 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 blah, and finally I had just had enough, and I finally I, I did I took that detour, and I wound up driving down this road. And there was nothing but trees on both sides. I mean, and it was a country road, and it went forever and ever and ever. And there was a little driveway that kind of pulled off. It didn't go to nowhere. There was a gate there. But I pulled into that driveway, and I said, okay, I got to get out, and I have to stop, and I have to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I remember pulling the tailgate down on my truck, and I, I sat on the tailgate. I had all these things to do. But here in the middle of the day, I had finally had enough, and I had finally fed up with life. You know, and I, I can remember sitting on the back of that tailgate 
and breathing in. And then I started thinking about how beautiful the trees was that God had put here. I started thinking about how beautiful the day was that God had made for me to be out here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we, that's where we lose our focus. We don't, we can't see the things that God has set right before us because we have, we're, we're part of all the congestion. Mm -hmm. We try to make busy for ourselves. Yeah. You know, I, I remember that day I said, okay, God, I need to learn to breathe. I need to learn that when things start getting congested, I've got to stop and talk to you. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I've seen, and I've laughed so many times when you see these, um, these tags that see God's my co-pilot. <laughs> yeah. And I have laughed and I thought, Lord, how mercy that's funny because if God was my co-pilot, he would be laughing at me the entire time I'm driving. But a lot of times we have to stop and we have to think that because that person sitting there beside you is him. That one sitting there that you're talking to when you're by yourself is him. We have to learn to have communication and open communication with him while we're driving, while we're doing whatever. Today I was outside and I was on the tractor and I was I was doing some work out there and I, I had just stopped and right in the middle of what I was doing, I turned it off and I looked up in the air and I was thinking, God, today is such a beautiful day. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for where you have brought us from and where we're going. Lord, thank you for our ministry. And then I began to pray and I asked God, you know, Lord, these meetings that we've been having, Lord, I ask you, we need more of these. We need more meetings, not just on Sunday mornings. We need revivals. We need this. We need that. All these things because I'm going to tell you, the, the, the body that's out there is starving for a place to come. Mm -hmm. They're starving for a place to come in and yeah. somebody pray for them, somebody be there for them, somebody give them a word, somebody sit there and preach to them. You know, that, that's where this, this world's coming to. And I'm going to, you just said something that intrigued me. Because it brought back, it brought back a word that God gave you. Do you remember what God told you a couple of months back when I told you God's showing me you sitting on the tractor? You were sitting on the tractor today. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I told you that God was showing me you sitting there on the tractor? looking up praying really yes and i didn't say anything I, I i was waiting either to see it with my eyes or to hear you say it and you just said it so thank you lord <laughs> that was confirmation that you showed me him doing that well you know it is where we live you know there's so much we could work 24 hours a day, seven days a yeah. week, 365 days a year. But you have to take time for God. Mm -hmm. You know, because none of those other things even matter without no. God. It really doesn't. You know, because it, we pray we, we for specific things because we all do that. But we are all guilty of not taking the time to thank Him. For what he's doing mm -hmm. you know we, we we pray to God about a situation that we may be in and say God Lord I ask you right now to pull me out of that situation because I need to be over it that's not what we should be praying Lord I know that I'm in this situation you know what's ahead of me but through this through this whatever I'm going through show me something teach me something mm -hmm. make me stronger through this Lord because the next battle that I'm going to have to go through, I'm going to need you even more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today I, I was just, I was thinking about a whole lot of different things. I was, I was praying for people in the church just going through some things. I mean, and my, my mind was just going a hundred miles a minute. And I was thinking about the sermon for Sunday. You know, of course, you know, when, when you're preaching a sermon on Sunday and there's a, a, a quadrillion things that go through mm -hmm. your mind. Yeah. And I was just out there on that tractor and I have to stop and I have to just thank him. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, you, when we feel it coming up, that's just not a feeling. That's God wanting to talk to us. That's God wanting to hear from us. We shouldn't take those for granted. Yeah. You know, I, I can remember being on a, um, at, at a job and walking through, a particular room in, in this 
place where I was at. And I had been praying about something, praying about something. And it was the full-time ministry. And I, I kept fighting with God because I'm like, no, God, you know, I can't right now. You know, like I'm, I'm trying to argue with God mm -hmm. knowing that he, I'm never going to win. He's always going to win. And all of a sudden, I stopped what I was doing, got up from my desk. I walked through this room. And I was trying to get through this room to get outside to get some air. And it was in that moment when I was in that room, I got my answer. Even I had my answer, I continued to walk outside and have an argument with God. Mm -hmm. This is how God works. So the, 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 the guy who runs the company comes down and he's wanting to talk about next year's goals and talk about next year this and next year that. And I said, well, next year I won't be here. And before I even knew what I had said, I already said it. That's how God works. You know, once we start praying for something and we ask God for answers, mm -hmm. you know, we you can't fight that. You can't, if, if you are sincere when you pray, and we should all be, but when we really come to God in something in prayer, be careful of the answer you're going to get because he's going to give you an mm -hmm. answer and you have to accept it. You may fight him for a while, but he's going to win in the end. One thing that I have come to learn, and I'm still learning, um, you know, as Christians, I believe you never, and even as human beings, you never stop learning mm -hmm. until the day you draw your last breath. If you stop learning, you may want to hit your knees in an altar. Yeah. Um, so there's always um, new and exciting and unknown things about God. Um, that's why he says to search me out. But one thing that really hit me, and I said this Sunday, um, that over the weekend, it just really came to me. It was um, like the, somebody flipped the light on that God is truly in control of everything in my life. Sure. Everything. Doesn't matter how difficult, how big, how small. God, God's hand is in it all. And regardless of how it looks to me, I wouldn't want anybody's, I wouldn't want anybody else's hands in it but God's. Um, you know, sometimes we get anxiety and and we're anxious over the unknown and and over those detour um, that you know I was telling you about. That sometimes you know we know we're laser focused on where we're headed in life, and then oh, there's a um, caution sign, there's a detour sign, and oh, here off the road we go. And sometimes that gets us anxious until we just, you know, we're focusing more on the detour itself and not looking around us like you said. Okay, God, if I firmly believe that your hand is in everything I do, then your hand is in this detour. Mm -hmm. Your hand is keeping me. If your word is true, and it is, then... We have to take it at face value and, and know, okay, God, you promised that everything works together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. I've got to trust that this detour is for my good. Otherwise, yeah. you would be a liar, mm -hmm. and God's not a liar. Right. Um, we have to take God, we have to take a step back and say, okay, God, like you said, what is it that you're wanting me to see? What is it that I'm missing? What is it that, about this journey? What is it about this detour that's going to shape me? Um, you know, I really believe that God is continually, it says in his word that he's the potter, we're the clay, that he's continually shaping us and molding us into the people and the Christians that he wants us to be. Um, of course, he's not going to go against our own free will. That's why we have to yield freely to him and allow him to do his thing, allow him to shape us, allow him to chisel. And I, you know, chiseling means he's going to have to cut some things away and it's not going to feel real good. And sometimes, um, you know, it may um, hurt and be painful. But when all is said and done, when God gets done chiseling away the imperfections and impurities in our lives, that somehow got attached to us, somehow we picked up along the way, we will find that we will have more joy, we will have more peace, and we will ultimately have more power in God because we'll see his hand for what it is. Yeah. That's, um, 
that's something that we all fight. You know, we, we want that closer walk, but we have so much, as we've been talking tonight, we, we all make excuses because we have so much going on. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have to learn, each and every one of us has to learn that we have to give God some time. Yeah. You know, I, I, I say this all the time. I can't, I can't not read my Bible daily mm -hmm. because, you know, there You're is lying. things. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, th this is the bread of life. This is mm -hmm. where, this is where we get answers for certain things. You know, do I have to, do you, do you have to read your Bible to be saved? That no, but you know, you have to feed your, I mean, you have to feed this. So you have to read mm -hmm. your Bible. You know, a lot of times people will, we're in our office now. A lot of times when we're getting ready for service on Sunday mornings, we're looking outside to see who's in the parking lot because we're very anxious of who's going to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're praying for every seat in this house to be full. We're praying that whoever comes in this parking lot, that they leave, as I said a while ago, leave it outside. Come in with an open heart, an open mm -hmm. mind. Because you know what? We have to learn. I don't know why I keep getting this, but we have to learn to keep the junk outside. Yeah. Because we all have junk, but we've got to learn to keep the junk outside. We have to learn to love one another. You know, and, and I told you this morning, I said, I, I've, I've been, God's been laying some stuff on my heart about his love for us and our love for him and, and, and where all that meshes in the church house. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to learn that this church is a building. Mm -hmm. But when we come in here, the Holy Spirit's here. Yeah. You know, this building can be wiped away tomorrow, but the Holy Spirit's still sitting on this piece of property. We had a tent sitting out front, and the Holy Spirit was in that mm -hmm. tent. We've been outside. We have a pavilion thing out here. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is yeah. in that piece of property. You know, we have to learn that when we drive on here, when we have any activity here, when we do anything here, the people who enter in this this piece of land, we pray that they leave the junk alone, leave it off this property. Because see, God's making a way. God has a work here. You know, we I, I've told this a hundred times when I thought day one when we opened up the doors of this church that all 200 chairs would be slap full. And it wasn't. And I was thinking, Lord, what are you doing? Lord, I know next week they're gonna be it's gonna be awful. I know this week we were just kind of like getting started, make sure the lights worked, all this. But next week, it's gonna be slap full when next week came around. And I think two or three were out that was here the Sunday before. You know, I think, Lord, what are you doing? Okay, next week. This I kept doing this every week, every mm -hmm. week. But God said it's in my time. Yeah. I'm preparing people for when they come into that house, they're going to be starving for a word. They're going to be starving for something to do for me and my house. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we have to pray. God, send us those that are starving for, for a word. Lord, send us those that are broken. Lord, send us those that are looking for a place to come and work for you, Lord. Look, this is what we need to be praying. And God opened my heart. It wasn't my, Jimmy. My name's Jimmy. Gimme, 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 Lord. <laughs> yes. It's Lord. I want Your will to be done. Because see, there's too many things that's happened in this church, Becky, that I know one hundred thousand percent that this is all God. Mm -hmm. The things that are about to happen in this church, because You've been given dreams, I've mm -hmm. been given dreams, and, and 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 we've both been given visions. When these things come to pass, it wasn't Shane. It wasn't Becky. No. It wasn't any person in this church. It was all God. Yeah. That's what we have to remember. And, you know, we're talking about the, the detours and we're talking about having anxious feelings. Um, you know, when, when life throws us curveballs and we get off track and we have to take an alternate route, um, there's a scripture that I want to read to you. Um, it's Isaiah 46 and 4. And this is going to be the NIV version because I just like how it's worded. Um, it says, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. That right there, um, you know, when, when life takes us off course and takes us on a detour, we have to 
um, stand on Isaiah 46 and 4. God, you are the one who sustains us. You are the one that carries us. You are the one who rescues us in our time of, of the unknown, our time of, God, I don't know. I, maybe you, you can't see God. Maybe you can't feel God. Um, you may be in a place where you thought you would never be. But God said, I am he. Um, you know, earlier in the scripture, it talks about from the womb to the gray hairs <laughs> and everything in between. It was him that created you in your womb. And it is he um, that it says, I am he. Um, even to your old age and the gray hairs. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter um, what you've been through, your walk of life, where you come from, what you've done. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when just as he sustained you in your mother's womb, he is sustaining your footsteps even now. Amen. He's sustaining your detour. He's sustaining the, the moments of the unknown. He's sustaining you right in the middle of darkness. He's sustaining you. Um, when when it doesn't feel like you're standing on stable ground, he will sustain you. And it said he will rescue you. Why do we need rescuing? Because we can't rescue ourselves. You, you read that again. He will what? He will sustain you and he will rescue you. Okay, he will rescue you. That's, the, that's in the NIV, the New King James Version? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the King James Version... I just want to add to um, that I will rescue. The last sentence in the King James says, I will carry and I and will deliver you. It says, I will carry and will deliver you. So that's telling me, I like this because it doesn't matter how old you are because we've already read that mm -hmm. from the very beginning until the very end. He's not only going to rescue us, he's not only going to carry us, but what is that, what is that last two words going to say? deliver you mm -hmm. he's going to deliver us so what does that mean that means that he's going to rescue us he's going to carry us through it and then he's going to deliver us mm -hmm. so he's going to, he's not only going to just come up fight the fight and leave and take off he's going to carry us through the whole thing he's never going to leave us and then at the very end he's going to deliver us in the safe grounds mm -hmm. you know that is one of my favorite verses because it, it does not matter the detours that we make. It doesn't matter where we stray. It doesn't matter this. It doesn't matter. It says it right here. If we're a child of God, he is going to take care of us mm -hmm. all the way through. Yeah. Because there's things that God sees. In fact, it's all. God sees all when we cannot. God sees, like I said, the, the, um, the things lying in wait for us. You know, the enemy sets traps for us. But we are promised no weapon formed against us shall no prosper. Um, sometimes God will shield us from it. Sometimes God will take us around it. Sometimes God will bring us up, right up to it. But, and sometimes God will walk us through it. Um, but at the same time, regardless of how he delivers us, the important part is he delivers us. There's a thing on Facebook, I don't know if you've noticed it, but there's a thing on Facebook that different people are posting. And it says, Ab no, ab is, I think it says, absolutely no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I like the way they put that, absolutely no weapon. That means nothing. Because my God is bigger than any problem. Mm -hmm. My God is bigger than any disease. My God is bigger than any sickness. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we, we we look at things as being just horrible. Mm -hmm. Just being horrible. Yeah. But God says, I'm trying to show you something along the way. I'm try, I'm, I'm not only going to deliver you from it, but I'm going to set you free from it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we don't realize. We want to be delivered from it, but do we want to be set free from it? God said, I'm going to do both. I mean, it says it right there. I will deliver you. You know, God could have easily smoked Pharaoh like that. Yeah. But he allowed it. He drew Pharaoh out. He um, he drew him out of Egypt to chase 
the children of God. Do you know that the enemy um, is being drawn out yeah. to, to come out of his cave? The enemy is being drawn out to get closer to you, not because you've done anything wrong, not because um, you know, you're being punished. It's because you are being delivered. Yeah. Um, God did that for the children of Israel. He drew Pharaoh out and with their own eyes. Um, we talked about this on Wednesday night. Even when it looked like they were backed into a corner, they were backed against the Red Sea. Had God not drawn Pharaoh back out, he would have sought them another day. Yeah. I, you know, there's times that um, Satan will come and he'll fight me and he will um, wage war against me. And, you know, through through God's grace and provision, um, you know, I win that battle. And he goes away for a season. Right. Just to come right back another day. Yeah. God did not allow Pharaoh to do that. And sometimes we have to understand, again, that everything that we go through, everything that we walk through is for our good. Um, sometimes we will get an upfront and personal <laughs> seat um, to the show. We will see our enemy come toe-to-toe -to -toe with us. We will see our enemy come within reach of us. Yeah. But it never says that the enemy will have any authority over you. Amen. He can be right in your face and you will still have more power because the Bible says, I've not given you a spirit of fear. Don't you buckle up That's on right. me. Don't you back up on me. Don't you, um, you know, don't you cower to the enemy. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but you stand tall. I've given you a yes. spirit of of, of power Amen. and of love and of a sound mind. How do you defeat the devil? By recognizing the power that is given to you by the Almighty God. How do you um, defeat the enemy? By loving. Love, love, love. How do you defeat the enemy? Have a sound mind. Don't let him shake you. Do not do not let him rattle your mind, your hearts. Um, it says in the book of Philippians um, I believe it's chapter 4, and we've studied this too on Wednesday nights, that to rejoice, again, I say rejoice. Let your self-control, your discipline be made known yes. to all men. Um, and, you know, and, and be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with, by prayer and supplication, yeah. with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And then... The Lord God will keep your heart and mind yes. through the Lord Jesus Christ. When we learn the steps to go through when we're engaged in battle, you know, it's crazy to the world. How am I supposed to rejoice when I'm being attacked? How, <laughs> how can I have joy when everything is going wrong around me? How can I have the peace of God when people are walking away from me? Um, the, you know, I feel like my mind is in a battle zone. Rejoice. Because that's what, that's what brings your victory. Rejoice. That's what's going to bring your peace. Rejoice. That's why Paul said, again, just to clarify, <laughs> you know, what? In the Bible, it says rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. But if I had to reword what Paul really meant, <laughs> I would have to say that it's rejoice. No, don't stop there. Don't ask why. Don't ask but what. No, again, rejoice. I say no questions, no ifs, ands, buts about it. Again, I say rejoice. And it's sometimes, it, it, and it's, it's funny that we're talking about this because it's the same person that I was talking to today we were talking about this. You know, it's hard to rejoice when something happens, but the Bible says we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, okay, okay. I'm rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. And then when that same problem hits you again, then you're like, okay, it's really hard now. And then when the third and fourth time it hits you the same way, the same, everything, it's like, okay, well, Lord, this is what this is the carnal part of us. We're yeah. saying, okay, once shame on them, twice shame on me. Mm -hmm. How can I keep rejoicing over the same thing? But God said, rejoice again, rejoice. It is it, it's it's not up to us. He's telling us what to do. We've got to do it. Yeah, you know, um, 
Jesus forgave 70, seven times 70. And that's, when we think about that, that's a lot. But we're not, we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to have peace. Yeah. We're supposed to have joy. joy. You know, it's not, I don't want anything at all, nothing between me and God. You know, they asked Jesus, do, how many times do we forgive our brothers? Up to seven times? He said 70 times seven. Yeah. And I know that there are people in our lives who may be on their 490th time of being <laughs> forgiven. They're, they're really pushing that scripture to the limit. But God is, is, is in his wisdom and his love is saying, forgive them. Even if it's a hundred times, even if it's a thousand times. Why is it for them? No, it's for you. Right. It's for your peace of mind. It is for your inward joy. Um, it is for the the grace that abounds so much more than we're ever willing to pay back. There's no amount um, of work that we can do. There's nothing that can even compare to the times that God has forgiven us time That's and what I was time say. and time again. How many times did we? How many times did we let God down? How many times did God want to talk to us and we turned our back? Yeah. How many times did, you know, we go before God and say, God, I need this. Amen. Not taking the time to talk to him and to thank you. You know, how many times did God forgive us? I mean, I, I think about it and I'm thinking, man, I know, I know I ran out of 70 times seven with God a long, long time ago. <laughs> but I think if God would not have forgiven me, where would I be today? You know, we've got to learn to forgive. We've got to learn to forget. We've got to learn to love. We've got to learn to move on. You know, sometimes you have to love from afar, but you have to love. You know, it's does anywhere in the Bible tell us that we should hate our brother? Should we hate yeah. this? Should we hate that? No. Our, our Bible, you know, this is a love story. Mm -hmm. Love story is not all... And I won't be preaching on this Sunday, if God willing. Love story is not all roses and a box of chocolates. Sometimes love is getting a toe stepped on. Love is tough. Sometimes, yeah. I, yeah, it's tough love. You know, I can't tell you how many times as a child that I would get in trouble. <laughs> and my parents would say, now here comes the tough love. You know, It's going to hurt me more yes. than it's going to hurt you. And that, I still don't see where it did because I'm the one that was receiving <laughs> on the other end. But... You know, if it wasn't for a, a parent's love, you know, where would I be today? You know, mm -hmm. where, if a parent didn't love me enough to take me to church, if a parent didn't love me enough to pray over me, you know, this is what we've got to think about. We've got to learn to love. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it, that's been on my heart, my spirit. And I don't, we got off a tangent on love. But <laughs> that's that was, okay. I guess that was our we detour. We just let the Lord lead. That was our detour. We, um... We hope that this week's message encouraged you. We hope that it inspires you yes. to keep, even if it is on a detour, keep moving forward. Keep following the signs. Keep reading the signs. Um, because, you know, God gives us these detours for a reason. Um, sometimes it's for preparation for what's ahead. Sometimes it is... Um, for safety and security measures. Sometimes it's it's just because he loves us and he knows that we're not quite ready for where we're headed or what's ahead of us. And sometimes he has to take us on a detour to not only show himself to us, but to show some things about ourselves mm -hmm. um, to us. And so we hope that, that this message blessed you um, we're going to pray before we, we, um, end this, this power talk. Um, but there's some, a couple of announcements that we have. We have to, um, we have to stay focused on the signs. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's, that's really good. And, you know, it doesn't matter how far you think that you're lost on the road, on the detour. You have to learn that we have to follow the signs. Yeah. And, and it's just like you said, our Bible is the signs. We have to, everything in here pertains if we just ask. 
God, I, I've got something going on. I need some help. Before I open up my Bible, I ask you to open my heart, mind, and soul for what I'm about to read in Jesus' name. Um, so I, I think that's that's a great a great thing. Um, we'd like to offer you a bottle of oil, and we also have these prayer cloths. These are free of charge if you'll just um, email us or if you will let us know on Facebook that you would like to have some. You can um, just let us know the address. We'll mail it to you, um, and you can get, I mean, we'll, as many as you need. But again, the oil and the prayer cloths, these both have been prayed over. They're anointed. Um, that you put them in your pillow. You can put them in your food. You can use them to pray with one another. Yeah, I know we, uh, we, we, we strongly mm -hmm. encourage using anointing oil because there's just something about that stuff. It's like a salve. When it soaks in, yeah. there's just healing powers that come with that. Yeah. Um, if you are interested in these, you can, um, like Shane said, you can either leave it in the comment section or you can um, send us a, a private message or you can email us at rofministries2021 at gmail.com. Um, you can also, if you have prayer requests, if you have um, praise reports, we always like hearing what God is doing. Um, so you can email us there or you can write to us um, at Remnant of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 481, Orchard Hill, Georgia, 302 six six and if you if you need um somebody to pray for you pray with you um or like to contact us our phone number is seven seven zero eight two eight five eight 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 yes and if you are local to the area of griffin georgia and you would like to visit we currently pastor here at abiding love community church um, we have service every sunday morning at 11 a.m. and we also have Wednesday night Bible study in our um, fellowship hall. It's very casual, very laid back, but we dive into the Word of God and we really have a good time. But we also, the, the, the thing that I really love is at the end we pray. We take prayer requests and we pray. And when I say yes. we pray, we pray. Yes. Um, and we've we've heard, you know, some some testimonies. We've heard some um, things of how God is moving and, you know, prayer changes things. So we invite you, um, if you're looking for a home church or if you just want to visit, to come by 1370 North McDonough Road in Griffin, Georgia, 30223. Um, so if you've got, we're going to pray um, as we close. And if you have something that you are in need of, um, maybe you have a sickness in your body, just, you know, put your, your hand wherever the sickness is. Um, if you know someone who is sick, stand in proxy for them and put, you know, pray for them and, and put your hand where their sickness is. Um, because we know that God is still in the healing business. Yes. Um, so with that being said, um, Shane, you want to pray? Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you tonight for this message. Lord, we thank you for everyone that is online viewing this. And yes. Lord, right now we ask you just to go where they are at. Lord, we just ask you to touch their bodies. Lord, wherever their hand is at on their bodies, Lord, we just ask for an anointed healing. Lord, we ask for covering from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you for what's about to happen in their lives. Lord, we just plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. Lord, we just ask you to continue blessing these Tuesday night services. Lord, I ask you just to speak to the souls. Lord, just like I pray here, Lord, I ask to put somebody in their path that they can witness to, that they can share the gospel to, Lord. And Lord, I just I, I thank you right now for these detours that you put us upon yes. sometimes. Lord, I ask you, if there's someone that's on a detour, Lord, just let them, their minds and their heart and spirit open up to the directions that you give them in the Holy Bible, Lord. I just thank you for this word, Lord. I ask you just to continue touching those that are looking for an answer, Lord. Just give them the, the, the places to open up and, Lord, where to read. Lord, we just thank you for everything that's in this ministry. Lord, we just ask you to touch each and every person as we come back next week, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, we hope you have a blessed week. We will be praying for you. 
Again, if you need us through the week, you want um, a prayer sent out, just contact us, whether it's on our Facebook page, YouTube page, email, yes. regular mail, whatever it is. We want to know um, what you need prayer for so that we can pray. And we again, we thank you for joining Power Talk with Shane and Becky. Until next Tuesday, God bless you, and we love you. We love you.